Hello, Billy Core from Carolina Circle City. It's um, Friday, November 16th of 2012. Um, yes, I'm still here. Um, I know I haven't been making many videos lately, but it's because I've been very, 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 very busy. Busy in a good way, but, but yet very busy. <laughs> so I thought I'd come on camera for a second here and sh show off a, a yet another Packard Bell I've acquired. Um, I've actually had this one for quite some time, but I'm just now showing it on camera. This is the Packard Bell Legend 130 CD Supreme, manufactured July 28th of 1995. I bought this at Value Village back in July of this year for um, a few dollars. Very similar to my 402 CD. It has the spec sticker. As you can see, it's almost like a, a Legend 822 CDT um, in 3x3 desktop form. It has a 100 megahertz Intel Pentium processor. A 1.2 gigabyte hard drive, but it was dead when I got it, so it now has a 3 gigabyte hard drive from, from another Packard Bell. 8 megabytes of RAM. Um, I think it has 40 in it now. I think I put some more in it. Uh, quad speed CD ROM, which is still in here. A 14 bits per second um, modem. Dial up, that is. And Packard Bell Navigator, of course. Designed for Windows 95, although it originally came with Windows 3.1. Look at all that nostalgia. <laughs> And it also also got the original monitor that came with it. It's sitting right over here. It's connected to my um, multimedia D135. Anyone remember that little computer of mine? <laughs> Let's uh, turn it around. I really should be using a tripod right now, but I didn't think this part would be that bad. <laughs> okay, it's good enough. Okay, there's the barcode sticker. Um, for those of you who don't don't know how to find a manufacturing date on a on a '90s era Packard Bell, um, it, and if your system credentials are are unable to be used anymore, such as the case with this one, take a look at these numbers right here. You'll notice there's a 0, a 7, a 5, a 2, and an 8. Now, 07 means the month. That's will be 7 month, um, July. 28 means the, de the day of the month. That will be um, the 28th. And the 5 stands for the last digit of the year the computer was manufactured. In this case, 1995. So, July, 20 July 28th, 1995. Boy, am I weird. <laughs> okay, got power supply, parallel printer port, serial port, PS2 mouse and keyboard, VGA out, um, the standard Packard Bell sound modem card, and yes, the QA seal has been broken because I've had to open it up, and maybe the original owner may have as well. Let's uh, pop the case open. Okay, here's the inside of the computer. Right there's the um, hard drive. This actually was originally in my Platinum 2240, but I didn't have any other hard drives to put in here, so yeah. Got the CD-ROM, a uh, quad speed, manufactured um, April of 1995. Um, very good month, I remember it. And yeah, I really do. <laughs> uh, floppy drive, it's not original. The original was um, shot so I put this one in here again the Packard Bell sound modem card it's very underrated in my opinion I mean you get everything all in one including FM synthesis all right there's a 100 megahertz Pentium and this is a PB 600 motherboard by the way the same that's in that was in my Legend 822 CDT as well as my Legend 1510 Supreme. Uh, there's, a, there's the RAM way back there. 
uh, CMOS battery, which um, I don't know if you can see it's so dark, but it's soldered onto the motherboard as as to be expected on a PB600 board. And power supply. Uh, all right, got it plugged back together. I mean, I got it put back together and plugged in. Oops. <laughs> And it's all ready to go now, um, so let's uh, hit the power button. So we can go into the BIOS. Uh, it would help if the keyboard was closer. Ugh. Alright, date's right. Uh, disc at A, disc at B, which unfortunately doesn't have room for. There's the 3 gigabyte hard drive I have in it. Uh, nothing on the slave. The CD-ROM. The IDE adapter slave. It has 64, 640K of system memory on board and extended memory 39. Just as I thought. get out of here. I don't know why it does that. It it, it doesn't detect. It does not detect an operating system. But once I press a key on the keyboard, it starts booting from the hard drive. I don't get it. it. Must be the way it's formatted. But it's got a Packard Bell installation of MS DOS and Windows for work groups on here. sound works. <laughs> Alright, let's go to program manager. And there's all the stuff on the programs. And you know what? I'm going to get the tripod out because this is getting a little too awkward. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. Um, let's get started. Um, it's, the it's the regular uh, 1995 era software package we all know and love. First of all, we better start off start off with the traditional navigator. A little bit. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from: Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. You know, it's been four years since my first Packard Bell video. I'm out of jokes for this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> We'll let the others come up with jokes. Here we go. It's about what you expect here. It's Navigator 3.0. And we got a little envelope to bring up a tip, quick tip about Navigator. Isn't that nice? The info guide at the bottom of the screen gives you more information about each area of Navigator. Just click on this symbol and then click on an object you wish to explore. Oh my gosh, my life is complete now. I now know I now know what to do about Navigator's Info Guide. Wow! Okay, software room. Got works, money, uh, Encarta. Good old ski free. Complete with the abominable. <gasps> snowman. Got the Journeyman project. I never, I don't recall playing that as a kid on our original Packard Bell. Um, I finally did play it a couple of years ago on one of my modern Packard Bells I got in my collection, and to be quite honest, it creeped 
me out. <laughs> and then again, so did the game's seventh guest. <laughs> and that's a creep fest on its own. <laughs> and Children's Corner, the best part, we got Toon Land, Spider Man, and um, Cartoon Maker, that is. Millie Fitzwillie's Mouse Catcher and the Pirate Who Wouldn't Wash, or as I like to call it, the Stinky Woo Pirate. <laughs> Uh, communication tools. You know, I actually got an, the oldest version of AOL working that I have, um, which is AOL 2.5. I actually got it working on broadband internet. I need to do a video of that sometime to show you guys. And speaking of that, here's 2.0, which I cannot get to work. I'm not going to sign up. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> Clock and all kinds of good stuff here. But I'm gonna get out of here. And I'm gonna show a, a Packard Bell bundle game from my childhood that I don't believe I've ever shown on camera. How many of you remember a little game called Tomb Land? Stick it on in here. Here we go. And it features the voice of Howie Mandel, by the way. I'm not going to touch your hat. I don't know where it's been. Yes, I do remember playing this on my old original Packardville. Of course, with Windows 95. Oh, boy. Here's old McDonald to tell you about his farm. Here's the deal. Old McDonald's farm, get it? <laughs> don't forget to look for me when the song is over. <laughs> oh no, don't tell me he's gonna sing. Yeah, he's gonna sing. My name is I don't give a crap. Seriously, though, I love this game. <laughs> Little blimp up there, what does it do? I'd get a new blimp if I were you. It's been a while since I've played this game, actually, so you're going to be witnessing um, real life, real time nostalgia here. Let's go in the barn. When you're ready, click on me, and I'll take you to the hole down in the barn. That reminds me, I'm eat, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna be eating barbecue in a couple of weeks. You know, 
um, I know this is a children's game and all, but shut up, I'm talking. I know this is a children's game and all, but um, this reminds me of something that UXW Bill once said. Um, at one time there was. When you're ready, take the house and we'll take you to our farm. I'm talking here. At one, UXW Bill once said that at one time. C computer games and software in general did, did not take itself as seriously as it does now. Oh, come on! <laughs> but uh, it it was an amazing time back then. Games and s computers in general were just so much more fun, and Packard Bell was just a a leader in that concept. I mean, look at all the software that came with these computers, like this and my first encyclopedia, and even the Journeyman Project and all its creepiness. So I'm, I miss those days. But anyway, um, hey little piggy, what are you gonna do? I may be a pig, but I can play a mean banjo. I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. I'm gonna Louisiana, my true love for you see. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. I came from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Okay, that's, um... Very nice of you. And one more thing, since it's almost Thanksgiving, let's see what the turkey's up to. Oh, it isn't Thanksgiving yet, is it? It isn't about a week, buddy. Let's get the heck out of here. If you'd like to go back to old McDonald's farm, click on me again. Right, let's go back to Windows. This is old McDonald's farm. I know. Do you really want to leave to that? If you do, click on the extra sign again. Alright. Okay. I'll do that. You're leaving too long. Come back again and play with us real soon. This is CD audio, by the way. That's pretty impressive. Now that, my friends, was called nostalgia. Anyway, let's see what else is on here. Um, well, nothing. That's what's on here because I 
just just um, now gotten around to reformatting the drive and putting a Windows installation on it yesterday, so I haven't put anything on it. Uh, we might as well um, do the classic canyon test. If you can hear it or not, it's kind of low. Anyway, um, that's about it for this computer. Um, if you're wondering why, um, you're probably asking yourself, well, if it's so close to my original Legend 822 CDT, then why don't I use it regularly? Well, unfortunately, it's a little wonky when it comes to Windows 95. Um, I had Windows 95 running on it, but certain computer games, um, especially Earthworm Jim, would have the scratchiest possible audio. It was so unbearable, you just, you just couldn't do anything with it. I tried for days and days to get it to work on this computer, but it just stayed scratchy. And I don't, I don't know why, because it's the inside of it's pretty much the same as my old Legend 822 and even my Legend 1510, and it's um, designed for Windows 95, and so you'd think it would work, but oh well, it Windows 3.1 works just fine on here. Let's go ahead and call it a day on here. Take the disk out of the drive. I'm going to put this computer back up and forget I had the tune land stuck in here. Anyway, um, that wraps it up for this time. I'll try to see if I can do some more videos as soon as possible. I know you guys are anxious but just so you just just realize they're they're on their way so don't worry so for now this is Billy Core signing off on November 16th of 2012 goodbye